Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today we have a video courtesy of Dear Mr. Frodo 1. And Mr. Frodo is driving their Tier 5 American Destroyer, the Nicholas. And this ship really holds a weird spot in my heart. I really like a lot of Tier 5 vessels, but the Clemson before her is just so strong that when you get in the Nicholas and expect to be able to do the same kind of thing and can't, it kind of sours your experience. That being said, the Nicholas is a very capable ship when driven correctly and still has those double-sided torpedoes. Two triple-barreled racks per side, meaning she is a great ambush killer, especially coming up through channels where you don't necessarily know what side the enemy is going to be on. You have the opportunity to shoot off both sides. Now, they are playing on Archipelago, and most times I find on Archipelago, a bunch of destroyers go exactly where Mr. Frodo is. Right to the middle of the map, you know, when this is domination mode, this is one of the caps, this is one of the caps, and kind of this is. And a lot of ships all seem to rush right into the middle here. So, with Mr. Frodo and this Kuma doing just that, they've got to be ready for a fight. But if they're ready for a fight and skilled, they're going to walk away with a lot of damage and kills. And that's kind of the game you always play in a destroyer when you play super aggressively. And it can pay off a lot at these lower tiers where maybe some of the people you're playing aren't quite as skilled or quick to react or used to it. But I find tier 5 or 6 is kind of the last tier you can play that really reckless, in-your-face style of destroyer play. And by 6, if you're still trying to do that, things just aren't going to go well for you. And things are definitely looking a little tricky already for Frodo. Uh, Kuma and an enemy destroyer on one side, DD's on the other. And you'll notice Frodo is using AP. And against some targets, I might say that I don't really recommend this, but against Akuma, as thinly armored as it is, it's a great idea, and a very skilled use of an engine boost to duck out of the way of all those peds, and you can hear them all smash into the friendly Kuma who's sitting right behind him, who gets wrecked, and unfortunately it also means he's got no spotting, and oh no, another set! He might have fit in between those, we will never know because they've run out. And now he's got an easiest lob dialed into his sights. And look at all those torpedoes that easiest lob just threw at that friendly smoke. My lord, that ship can be terrifying. The Russian vessels definitely do scare me at low tiers, because if they get inside that four kilometer range, there's no reason their torpedoes should ever miss with their speed and the amount of damage. And well, Starwalkers there managed to finish off one of Mr. Frodo's friendly Isakazes, but Frodo gets revenge for his fallen comrade and then quickly goes to work shooting more targets. Also, very smartly realizes not a lot of time left on their smoke, so they get moving. This is critical and I cannot stress that. You cannot be caught sitting still in a smoke. And unfortunately it looks like Mr. Frodo's team might get caught with their pants down. The enemy team have been driven straight up into their cap and they've already got one quarter of it. You can see Frodo pinging the cat or the map, other people saying defend the base and oh are his torpedoes gonna be true? Yes, they are! Oh, poor Furitaka. You drove in a straight line. You got exactly what you had coming to you. And, uh... You can see, even though there's some typos, but Mr. Frodo is doing something that I like. He's asking the CV for spotting, and CV players, please, one of your major roles is to spot. Especially in situations like this, where... You know, you've got a destroyer in your cap. It's going to be hard to run someone like that down. Get a plane over them. 
and just leave it there, spot them. Now the one fortunate thing is, the second they get into the cap, the enemy team can no longer capture. The enemy team will stop them from getting points by being there, but at least they can't end the game right away, and it forces everyone into a very close quarter duel, and you know, that's where the Nicholas does its work. Gets into the cap, pops his smoke, and uh, just starts going to work. Slowing up, he's gonna dodge those torpedoes as the other friendly destroyer gets killed, and now there's definitely some weight on Frodo here. Now this is one place I would have liked to have seen HE. Um, you know, side-on battleship, yeah, it's side-on, it's tempting to just go, oh, side-on AP. But your chances at fire and the damage fire will do, I think would really outstrip what you're getting there with AP because there's no way you're getting into the Citadel. So there's just not really big shots. And oddly enough, now that it's a cruiser who's side on in this Ganae, Mr. Frodo's back on HE, so maybe it's been some fat fingers, I don't know. But I would definitely focus a little more sometimes on uh, your ammo choice, Mr. Frodo. Just, just on the battleships, because really I feel HE and fires is a lot more effective. Now that's just my opinion, so I'll stop with that. And now he is using HE. So I, I would kind of like to know if you see this video photo, just throw in the comments what your feelings, why you were using AP there. Because maybe there's something I don't know and can pick up on. Because it definitely seems to be a bit of a range choice for you here. Now that the Koenig's further away, it's back to HE. I'm just always curious to try to learn new things. And this game would have been long over had Frodo not gotten up here. He's got a set of torpedoes up, and looks like some are coming in, though they're gonna miss. Gets a Citadel on the Phoenix, and this is definitely a place where AP is very useful. That widespread of torpedoes is probably gonna pose a pretty big problem for this Phoenix. Looks like one is gonna land true, gets the kill. The T-22 is spotted, I'm pretty sure he's who has almost all of these uh, capture points, and yes indeed he does. Gets the reset on that, now things are looking good. Because they're in the enemy base cap train, they've got resets happening, there's no enemies down near there. So it kind of just comes down to now, how much damage and kills can you get before this game ends? And sadly, he didn't get the T-22 there. You know he's aching to get the Kraken. That's kind of what you always want. It's just getting that extra medal, five kills, which is nearly half the enemy team, always feels good. And the potential's definitely here. He's got the Koenig lined up for some torpedoes. Ducking and diving, trying to dodge some shells, though he eats all of those. Fortunate, they all seem to be over pens. Puts the torpedoes in the water at the Koenig. And this strategy works so well in these low tier American destroyers. The weave and get close. You throw torpedoes from one side, you then weave, you can throw them from the other. There's the Confederate. These torpedoes are looking good. No need to throw any more, buddy. As there goes the Koenig. So just this Isakaze, and if he can get him, he has his Kraken. But it's kind of a race against time, and the Isakaze isn't spotted. Now personally, wouldn't have popped smoke, Isakaze doesn't really scare me, because so many Japanese captains just do not use their guns. And Isakaze is going for a suicide run and messed up the suicide run. Oh, that poor Dee Dee. If you're gonna charge around the corner at a Konigsberg, you better hit with those torpedoes because the Konigsberg eats destroyers with that pistol. And so does Mr. Frodo. 
So, with the Kraken out of the way and just a CV left in this one, I'm going to bounce to the post battle. And what a result it is. 278,000 credits, 4,200 experience, the Kraken, devastating strike, high caliber and confederate, almost 115,000 damage, the five kills, and lots of gun hits, torpedoes. He did everything with this destroyer. And as I said earlier, the Nicholas is one that I struggled with it at times. And clearly, dear Mr. Frodo does not. Uh, absolutely just working that enemy team over, including some very deadly ships like the Konigsberg. Like, I drive my Konigsberg and eat destroyers all day. So to be able to get that kill, very important. And it should come as no surprise that Mr. Frodo, his top of the team, 2,381 experience, almost a thousand higher than the next closest person on his team to really put it into perspective which that's just impressive and it looks like they had an afk player on their team the Denae on their mr frodo's team getting zero xp way down at the bottom so good job to carry that one and when you look at the damage too so much of it is to ships that should be killing destroyers well at least a good chunk. You know, a Furitaka, a Phoenix, a Koenig, they're all very strong ships, and he did a lot of damage and got the kills on all of them. And the really impressive thing is, even without a premium account, made 195,000 credits, 4,000 experience, and if you look over to the premium side, that's, you know, 333, well, 334,000 and 6,400, which is a very impressive result. Thank you, dear Mr. Frodo, for sending this game in. Anyone else who would like to send in a replay, quicksilverslash at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilverslash, and I'll have another one for you guys tomorrow.